We previously examined the simple displacement controller. Essentially, it's proportional feedback on pitch angle error. This tracking controller was intended to maintain the trim state of this transport aircraft despite external disturbances. In simulation, we found the controller was effective at restoring the trim condition much faster than the uncontrolled system, but the elevator also excited the short period mode. This created an undesirable oscillatory transient response that was most apparent in the short period state's pitch rate and angle of attack. We now show how to dampen the short period oscillation while still maintaining the pitch tracking objective of the displacement controller. We know transients from the short period are the culprit and the short period is associated with pitch rate and angle of attack. So in attempting to dampen the oscillation, we propose regulating the pitch rate or driving the pitch rate to zero. That is, we'd like to introduce another tracking loop, but now for pitch rate. And since we want to regulate pitch rate, Q command is zero, leaving just proportional control on the achieved pitch rate of the system. Now the elevator action is a combination of two signals, one for tracking pitch angle and another that provides damping of the short period oscillation. The latter loop is referred to as artificial damping. This script implements the displacement controller with pitch damping or artificial damping. The inputs are the achieved pitch angle, the commanded pitch angle, the achieved pitch rate, and then the two proportional gains. The output is an incremental change to the elevator. It's implemented as a function and it's simply one line of code to implement the control law. This script is for linear analysis and tuning of the displacement autopilot with pitch damping or artificial damping. It allows graphic investigation through various plots that are traditional when tuning linear flight control systems. It's applied to one linearized system associated with a single trim condition at a time. We install the control package because we're in Octave load the vehicle model, load the linearized model, load the trim point, and then we have the option to select various types of plots, and the details of that script are below. But here we're going to plot the root locus first. So we turn that plot option on, and the ability to store frames, to change the directory, make a video, that's all uh, turned off at the moment. And so we have a few different root locus views that pop up. And so we use these plots to examine the effect of artificial damping on the closed loop system. For this, we hold the pitch angle gain fixed and vary the pitch rate gain. We can clearly see the effectiveness of artificial damping on the short period mode. Note that the controller also affects the fugoid. We observe eigenvalues moving parallel to the imaginary axis. This also increases the damping of the fugoid without it becoming less stable. Quantifying damping for each KQ we observe the monotonic increase in damping for both modes. We also want to check how the displacement controller with pitch damping affects the robustness of our closed loop system.
So we can get an idea of classical stability margins from the Nyquist diagram. And to compute the Nyquist diagram, we'll need the loop gain. So for this, break the loop at the plant input, and then determine loop gain as minus the output control signal divided by the input control signal. This gives K of S times P of S, and we evaluate that for various KQ holding K theta constant. Only at very high frequencies do we see a slight reduction in robustness as artificial damping increases. And in general, this Nyquist diagram is showing a very robust closed loop system. From the linear analysis, we select a pitch rate gain of negative 15, resulting in our tuned controller. So we would like to evaluate its effectiveness in a more realistic setting, our nonlinear simulation. And again, we're controlling the externally perturbed aircraft from the desired trim state. So let's first look at the open loop response of the aircraft at trim when externally disturbed. Now going to the longitudinal simulation, we can see that the simulation has eight different states first part just sets up the directories and then there's a loading of the simulation definition. This includes the vehicle model and what exactly we want to simulate. Now into the simulation definition script, the first part is the loading of the vehicle model and then we select whether or not we want to use control surfaces. In this case, we don't. And then we have the option to select open or closed loop control action, but since we turn the control surfaces off, that doesn't apply. And neither do the other two sections because control surfaces are turned off. But the delta CL and delta CM do apply. These are the disturbances that are added on to the coefficient of lift and the coefficient of moment. They're applied over a one second interval from five to six seconds in time with an amplitude of 0.3. And internally we've selected a quote unquote gust. It's a one minus cosine type of disturbance. The same form is selected for CM with a different amplitude, and the amplitudes were selected to make a significant impact on the aircraft. There's also a few different integrator options. There's a first order forward Euler, second order Adams bash forth, and then the built-in OD45. We can also choose whether or not to plot the results. In this case, I'm making the plot yellow. It's gonna be a single plot, and in the legend, it's going to be tagged with the name open loop, meaning control surface is fixed, no closed loop control. But later we're gonna look at the displacement and the displacement with pitch damping, so we'll have other legend entries. Uh, we're gonna save the plot in a particular directory and we're gonna give it the name control evaluation and that's it. So we run this. Uh, this is the first part of the simulation where we need to select the folder that the simulation resides in. That only needs to be done once. Simulation runs, the plots are generated. We're initially trimmed, and then the disturbance introduced at five seconds causes departure from trim with very slow decay of the perturbation effect due to the fugoid mode. The control objective is to return the aircraft to the trim state, effectively rejecting the external disturbance. So turning on the previous displacement controller from section 1.2, So we go back to the simulation definition. 
we turn the controller on and we're already selected the displacement autopilot so that's okay we're attempting to maintain the trim state so the theta input command is 9.2779 that's fine this section does not apply it's only for open loop we're keeping the disturbances on same integrator we're going to change the color of the plot to cyan and going back to the main driver run the simulation We observe a significantly faster return to the trim state, but with poor transient response due to exciting the short period with the elevator. This is the same response as shown in section 1.2. Now the artificially damped controller. Going back to our definition script, we now select displacement with Q or displacement with pitch damping. And now at this moment, let's pause and go to the vehicle model definition file. So this is where we have the reference quantities the mass and inertial properties, the aerodynamic data of the vehicle, propulsion data, and here's also where we're storing the gains. You can see K theta and KQ having their values. Also the time constant of the elevator and thrust model, trim data, all of this is stored into a structure called VMOD and that's loaded when the simulation is run. Everything else is the same. The only thing we need to do now is just change the color of the next plot. We're going to make it magenta. And now we go back to the main driver again and run the simulation. And what a difference it makes. Clearly artificial damping better achieves our control objective improved transient response, less oscillation, and return to trim much faster than the displacement controller alone. In our approach here, and generally in the application of linear flight control systems, we employ two main steps. First, design and tune the controller in a fully linearized setting. And second, test and evaluate this controller with the more realistic nonlinear aircraft dynamics. The linear control methods allow efficient and systematic tuning, but you may be wondering the accuracy of the linearized analysis, that is, how applicable it is to the nonlinear system. So, to explore this, we'll provide both systems, linear and nonlinear, the same step input and compare their responses. Well, going back to our simulation definition file, we've set now the step input to 12 degrees at 5 seconds. So it goes from the trimmed at 9.3 to 12 at 5 seconds. The 1 minus cosine perturbations are turned off. We're just evaluating the step command here. The script will run the nonlinear sim and then the linear sim. So the nonlinear sim gets the cyan color. The linear sim color is actually specified in the linear simulation. We're plotting and saving, and that's where we turn the linear simulation on. So let's open the main linear simulation driver. It sets itself up, loads the vehicle model, the trim and linearization data. 
sets its initial condition, simulates linearized response. Because it's a delta model, remember, we're adding the perturbations onto the trim state. And then finally, the plot is made, and you can see in subplot 242, we're making the color yellow. So we'll have a cyan, nonlinear, yellow, linear, and that'll be our comparison. And there's some animation stuff, but we don't need to worry about that. Okay, back to the driver for the main script. We run, completes the nonlinear sim, plots the nonlinear sim, and then runs and plots the linear sim on top of that. We find excellent agreement between our linear and nonlinear simulations. This validates the linear control methods for this design example, but in general, linear control methods are effective for conventional aircraft and missiles. In summary, we've added proportional feedback on pitch rate, termed artificial damping, to dampen the short period mode associated with the displacement autopilot used by itself. Our root locus showed that the artificially damped controller primarily affected the short period, but also added damping to the fugoid. Nyquist showed no robustness concerns and actually benefits compared to the displacement autopilot alone. And in nonlinear simulation, we saw how artificial damping was highly effective at improving the transient response of the displacement autopilot. Less oscillation, faster regulation to the trim state. Our ability here to work in a linearized fashion and then be successful in the nonlinear simulation is underpinned by the agreement between the linear and nonlinear dynamics. This is Flight Control Fundamentals Section 1.3 Displacement Autopilot with Pitch Damping or Artificial Damping. The codes used in this video will be available in the future at learngnc.com.